Hey guys, what's up? It is morning on the farm. I just got back from working out and I am getting some food stuff in order. So this is the time of year that I very easily fall back into very regular content where I'm posting several videos a week. Uh, you'll notice that my editing gets a little more raw during this time and I kind of like it that way. I love being able to give just like an actual peek in to what actual life looks like. It's not produced. Um, it really is just a window into our world, which I think can have benefit. I think that whenever we are willing to live in a glass house, we let other people see, and it can connect things for people that they didn't realize before. It doesn't have to be necessarily a how-to or um, intentionally super inspiring. It's just an honest look. So I'm making some food right now, and food is something you guys ask about all the time. Like, what do you cook? What does a day of food look like? And I have a hard time necessarily showing this because so much of the food we eat is what I perceive as relatively simple. But I can show you what I'm doing. I'm not necessarily going to tell you exactly how to do it, but I'm hoping that the ideas can kind of like trigger some, some things in you so that you don't feel so intimidated by meal planning because eating real food doesn't have to be super fussy. So I have some strawberries here. Um, our strawberries are coming on really strong. We had picked some up at a local farm that was selling them. Uh, I don't have enough that I'm growing to do things like make jam, but I didn't buy enough to make jam either. And these were getting a little soft. So I set these out, washed them off, put them in a colander on the counter this morning. So the kids ate those with breakfast. I just pulled some containers out of my freezer. Uh, these are actually have been in the freezer since last summer. This is pesto sauce from when we were swimming in basil last summer. Um, this is the last of what we froze. And I set this out on the counter to thaw out because tonight's baseball. Uh, we're in the busy time of year and easy dinners are kind of a must have. So tonight for dinner, we'll do some like gluten-free brown rice pasta. Um, I like Jovial. That's the brand I typically buy for gluten-free pasta because it it tastes like the most normal. We'll do that pesto with pasta and I'll probably cook some chicken or something to go on that. Right now, I just browned some of this real thick cut like slab bacon. I'm gonna dice this up. I've got some frozen potatoes. We have officially gotten through all of the potatoes that we grew last year. We had some left over that sprouted so badly they were not gonna be any good for eating, so we saved those, and that's what we replanted for potatoes this year. So I'm officially in not homegrown potatoes now. Uh, but I'm gonna brown these. I've got eight eggs here. Uh, I'm gonna throw some cream from our cow in these eggs and beat that shred some cheese and put this all together and make a frittata. I do have a recipe for quiche or frittata or something like this. I can't remember what all is up there, but on my website, I'll put a link down below to that. Meals like this are everything <laughs> whenever you're in a rush because you can pretty much throw anything in this. I have a jar of hatch chilies. I think I'll probably drain those and put some of those in here. Um, I still have some kale in the garden that hasn't bolted. Could saute that down and put it in here. Uh, just kind of whatever is growing. In the summer, our frittatas end up with like tomatoes. We'll throw onions in. You just want to saute everything to get the liquid off. That's the main thing. One of the keys for me for cooking from scratch is to one, always be thinking about the next meal. Um, that feeling that comes on you at six o'clock whenever it's like, hey mom, what's for dinner? And you haven't really thought about it. Avoid that altogether. Because getting in that place is what makes us need convenience foods. Something that we didn't have to think about ahead of time. So if you just get into the habit of kind of constantly thinking about what do I have? What's fresh? What's growing? What's in the freezer? It kind of allows you to avoid the need of convenience. The other thing is, is you can make convenience when you're thinking ahead. So for instance, having things like frozen sauces, I've got multiple one gallon freezer bags of homemade spaghetti sauce in the freezer. And I can literally take that frozen bag out, throw it in a cast iron Dutch oven on low, 
Um, you can freeze meatballs ahead of time. You can even freeze cooked meatballs ahead of time. So you can take the sauce out, the meatballs out, throw them into a Dutch oven, um, put it in the oven on low, and then all you have to do is, is boil some noodles to go with it. Or make some squash. That's really good over squash. Like, really any squash. I mean, I would eat meatballs and marinara over like zucchini and stuff like that. Uh, you, can, you can round it out however, whatever direction you want to go with it. I do think it's good. Look at these yolks. Look at those lovely yolks. I do think it's really good to find recipes you like and learn to cook on recipes until you know what works and then you don't need recipes anymore. Sometimes I'll say things on here like making kale chips and I'm like, you know, just tear them up and toss them in some oil and throw soft on them and roast them at 400 until they're crispy. And I'll get like 15 comments. Hey, can I get the recipe for that? And I'm like, I just told it to you. That was literally it. That's the, if I wrote it down, that would be the recipe. Like, how can I tell you how much salt to put on your food? It really depends on what salt you're using. It depends on how salty you like your food. I don't, I think we have to be willing to test a little bit and find out what we like for ourselves. And it's good to have a place to start. Yeah, if you find a recipe. When I wanna cook something, I usually look up about 15 recipes decide what sounds good and go from there and trying to figure out what I want to do based on my preferences. Another thing, there's my potatoes. Everything doesn't have to be a production. These are dried onions. Again, another step that goes into eliminating steps later. Would this be better with some caramelized onions that I chopped up an hour ago and slow cooked and some grass fed butter? Yeah, but I really want to take a shower before I go to the doctor's appointment that I have today, so this will be fine. I also want to reiterate a really big point to eating like clean, what I call real food, um, which I know some people have taken issue with that terminology. And I get what people are saying. I, I've had people say, you sound ignorant when you say don't eat things you can't pronounce, just learn to pronounce them. Um, the, what I'm trying to say is, is that my deep conviction is, is the f that eating food in the form that it comes from the earth or close as possible to it is what I believe is best for us. And, you know, it's just the conviction that I'm going to live by. And again, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm just showing you how I live mine. So I use the term real food because that to me is what makes sense. And don't get me wrong, I mean, there is some of this still in our life. My kid plays baseball, we go to the baseball field. I mean, there's so much candy and stuff there. But my thought is, is that that's in moderation because it's in that tiny little place of our life instead of in the rest of our life. Um, and so mostly real food, that's what we're going for. So I get where people are coming from. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad about the food that they have, but I don't think it's necessarily um, circumstances that's keeping everybody eating that stuff. In some case, it's just really not realizing that there are simple ways to do food in a way that's going to better serve your body and nourish your body. So one of the big things for us in eating real food is that like you don't have to eat what we perceive as breakfast foods for breakfast. Now I showed you guys recently that we will batch cook muffins, put them in the freezer, and that's often what my kids eat for breakfast. My kids like muffins, that's fine. Um, but many breakfast foods are foods that are presented as breakfast foods either take a long time to cook and make a mess or are grains. Many snack foods, if you have kids and you're going trying to buy like school lunch snacks, many of them are grains. So I can make something like this, which I guess you would maybe typically call a breakfast food, but really it's just fuel. And I can feed this to my kids for snack when they get home from school because they're going to come home ravenous. And something like this that has a lot of protein in it is actually going to be good for them because they're hungry. Many mornings, what I eat for breakfast, I would say I think most mornings this week, what I've eaten for breakfast is a grass-fed burger patty and a couple of strawberries. Like that's my breakfast is I start my day with a lot of protein. And you might not think of burger patties as a breakfast food, but I feel really good all day waking up and eating something like that. All right, some slab bacon, some browned to potatoes, hatched chilies, feta cheese, Parmesan, eight farm fresh eggs with some heavy cream um, all together, topped with some herbs, salt, and pepper. And this is going in 
at um, 375 probably for about 30 minutes or so. Now, a lot of times when I do frittatas, I just do them straight in the cast iron pan. The reason I did not do that is because I accidentally let that oil get a little too hot and I didn't want to risk that making the taste off, so I just put it in this. Plus, I'm gonna get in the shower while this cooks and um, I'm less likely to burn it in the stoneware, whereas that cast iron pan, I would probably need to keep a close eye on it to make sure it wasn't getting too brown. What are you doing? I was talking about cooking food. Oh yeah? Cooking real food. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> so I've been talking to people about, so some of the things I was saying in this video was talking about like, things don't have to be perfect. And talking about how just cooking from real ingredients and viewing it as fuel kind of helps. This is something I think you have a pretty firm grasp on. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of food I can't eat, so... That it, does make it, a I mean, it'll act... Like, I'll have allergy issues, and if I eat certain things, it'll be a problem. So I read a lot of labels, and I understand what I will look at and be like, maybe this isn't better for muscle growth, and I won't eat certain things, and I won't, you know... Yeah. So Jackson has a corn allergy, which... I, you were already reading food labels before you got diagnosed. Yeah, but I didn't know anything, and now that I have been yes. more consistently reading food labels, more different ingredients pop up more and more, yeah. and I realize, well, this isn't basically everything, and I know what it does and does not do for you. Yeah. So now so, he's into, I mean, I guess bodybuilding is what you call it. I just lift weights. He just lifts weights. He doesn't call yeah. it bodybuilding, but he lifts weights, and so he's Somewhere mindful. Somewhere between about what he eats. So what what is like a, for you, you need to eat something, you're gonna cook something, what are you gonna make? Uh, it depends on what kind of, it depends on really what I feel like eating and what we have, but eggs are always good. Sometimes we have some bacon in the fridge. Yeah. Maybe we have a couple steaks thawed out. I mean, that's not as normal though. Yeah. I'm trying to think of another thing I like to make a lot. I do eat a lot of eggs. I mean, it's really yeah. convenient. It just yeah. works. I still don't make a whole lot of, I don't, I don't usually put together dinner or anything, but if I'm hungry, I know something I can always make that'll work. Yeah. That's good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I pulled my food out of the oven earlier. Um, turned out well. That'll get eaten on through the afternoon as kids come in hungry. Uh, Maya ate it for lunch. I knew Jackson would probably talk about eggs because um, considering he's very mindful of how much protein he's consuming because he is lifting weights and stuff, eggs are convenient. We do have a lot of them. It's a food people often have a lot of, you know, whenever they're homesteading because chickens are kind of the gateway animal. I mean, he can grab some sort of meat if he wants to that's cooked we keep cooked bacon and stuff like that um, and chop that up and put it in scrambled eggs he can throw cheese on them he can throw veggies in them if he wants to i think we are so used to seeing a meal as a certain thing like a protein a starch a, a veggie or different things and sometimes it's okay to just fuel and i think a lot of people end up falling into eating fast foods or convenience foods or snacking on things that don't really have anything nourishing in them because they didn't eat what their idea of a meal was. And sometimes it's okay to just cook some eggs and eat that for lunch. It keeps you from eating half a bag of potato chips a few hours later. It's best to just fuel your body. So anyway, those are some thoughts on food today. I didn't really know what I was going to shoot for a video and this kind of came up. It's a very busy day. I'm running from one errand to the next. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a look in the window. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.